Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Karen lost her place because she tried to make my life worse. The second story, had a minor parking war with my neighbor that resulted in them getting towed. The third story, girls shoplifted so they didn't get a job. Today's first story is, got Karen put out. A few days later, I'm out on my way to work. I leave at about 6 to make it in time to have breakfast at the desk before I log on at 7. I go around to the garage and Karen has left her car outside a garage and positioned it so I can't get my car out. I knock on her door and of course she doesn't answer. Bang on it a few more times. Nothing. I even yell at the door. Hey Karen, you're blocking my car. I need to get to work. Her dogs are kind enough to respond loudly but not her. This is clearly her petty revenge for the bikes, I'm sure. Fortunately, it's a nice day so I can just take one of them to work. The bike can fit around her car. Thanks to her, I wasn't going to have time to enjoy my breakfast. That evening, I come home and her car is still there. So instead of putting it back in the garage, I leave the bike parked behind her car, just at the edge of the street. Now I know what you're thinking, but OP, what if she backs into it? And I was kind of hoping that was where it would go. See, I've got great insurance and an even better lawyer. But no, this is how petty she is. She calls the cops. Come knock on our door, push the bike over, go through the front yard. No, calls the cops. The policeman informs me that I'm blocking her car from exiting. Yeah, I was kind of the point. I inform him that she started it. Yeah, I know. I felt like a kid saying it. And honestly, we'd have called the police on her for this SH in this morning, but it seemed juvenile. Cops response? Yes, but that's why we're here. That's just sad. Let's me know our species is doomed. However, once I explain the whole thing, Mr. Policeman knocks on her door, addresses himself and gets her to come outside. We explain the whole mess. Cop asks, is this true? She admits it but can't produce a reason for it. Cop scolds us both to stop blocking the driveway, says he doesn't want to have to come back out to our residence again. Huh, yeah, okay. That weekend we go over to the neighbors for a few drinks. No, not that one. She doesn't like us. The next duplex over. Their porch is about 30 feet or so from the original scene of the crime, the garages. We're not being loud, no music, just a handful of us cooking out and drinking beers. Oh, and among the guests this evening is our landlord himself. Did I mention we were in good with him? So anyway, sure enough, the nice policeman comes by. It's not the same officer as time, but nonetheless. He comes to the deck, flashlight in hand, says he got a noise complaint call. Clearly it was her. But what is rib-bustingly hilarious is that the offer said the noise complaint was placed by, wait for it, the landlord of the house. Landlord steps forward and says, Funny, I don't remember calling to complain about myself. Once again, we explain everything to the officer. He chuckles, asks us to keep it down and leaves. After that, Mr. Landlord goes over to her unit. Of course, she doesn't answer the door, but speak anyway. Letting her know what she did wasn't cool, and she better not do it ever again. After that, we tried to avoid one another. Minor SH like UPS package is dropped for her. We find it on our side and move it over. Later on, we'll hear through the door, keep your hands off my stuff, or other minor headaches that make us wish her dogs would turn on her. A few weeks later, I'd gotten a promotion at work, so we threw a party. Sure enough, the cops were called again. This one was not placed by the landlord, but he was still there. He yells over at her door, Hey Karen, this is getting old. This next instance I can't quite take credit for, but Karen had built this obnoxious awning to cover her side of the porch out back. She never uses the porch, so why bother? However, I clearly remember a stipulation in our lease that says we're not allowed to modify the exterior of the units at all. Maybe hers is different. Maybe I should call landlord and find out. What's that? No. She doesn't get to make modifications either? Oh well, she did. So he makes her remove it. Again, because we're in good with him. He shares the tale with us. How she beed, then begged, then relented. It was ear candy. Speaking of candy. Come Halloween, I decorated the yard. I had heard from multiple neighbors of ours that their children were frightened of my front yard come Halloween. By this point, I should have guessed though that the lines were being drawn with Karen figuratively and literally. I had to move some of my decorations, and that included the 15-foot ghost on the roof of the unit. I had to move it all the way over onto my side. So come Halloween night, we took her son out trick-or-treating, and literally every kid we saw, we told them to go by her place. She had the good candy, and lots of it, but she's old and hard of hearing, so you'll have to bang on the door pretty hard. No, she won't mind. Now, I realize this was also mean to the kids who went to her door, but were these sacrifices on the altar of petty? Finale season. It's been about 10 plus months now. The cops hadn't had to come back out and no one had been cussed out in a while. One evening, we hear a splatter coming from the kitchen. Go in and find the pipe is busted under the sink and spraying. 
I quickly go out to the main and close it. But because this is a duplex, I've cut off water to her side as well. She's not home yet, so we call our buddy the landlord. Landlord comes and addresses the issue, small part to fix it. Needs to run to Home Depot. Be right back. Meanwhile, I type up a note for Karen's door. I let her know we had a leak, had to shut off the water, but it should be fixed within an hour or two. Even thanked her for understanding. While he's gone, we clean up the water. It was a lot. Then before he returns, we hear the splatter again. At first, I'm a little confused. I know I turned it off, but then it clicks. I go outside and there's Karen holding a pipe wrench. Hey, didn't you see my note? Yes, but my pets need water. Yes, but now you're flooding our unit. I don't care. I need water. My girlfriend comes out and goes off shouting, calling her a bee. Next door neighbor hears and comes out. It's a show now. I go get my wrench to close the main valve again, but she won't move out of the way. She's literally blocking me. I half expect her to take a wrench to my head, so I back off. Sure enough, landlord arrives to the show. Hey, we left her a note. She ignored it and started the water again. Wait, she what? Then he turns to light into her, cussing her out. I take advantage of her distraction to go kill the water again, but at this point it's been running long enough that the carpets are soaked. Pros have to be called out. Meanwhile, landlord is still yelling at her. All right, Karen, that's it. You're out of here. But I've already signed next year's lease. Doesn't matter, tear it up. And I'm taking your deposit to pay for their damages. But I don't have anywhere else to go. I couldn't help myself. I interjected. Hey, Karen, I could have sworn I heard you talking about getting out of this place a few months ago. Back when I was working on the bikes. She just blurted out, F you. The default argument for anyone who has nothing else to say. Anyway, she continues to argue and cry about her deposit. She'll need that for her next apartment. She can't afford to move. She threatens small claims court to get it back. I put that one to bed real quick. Karen, I left a note on your door and you chose to ignore it. Small claims won't give you SH. We spent the next couple of nights at a hotel while the carpets were redone. He put it all on insurance and just pocketed the deposit. Win-win. Few more weeks go by without so much as a peep from her. One day we come home and she's just gone. Porch, garage, and apartment all cleaned out. Sometimes I wonder whose life she's peeing on now. Great story, OP. I can't stop laughing. I love SH like this, especially when it works out so well in the end. What an effing bee, that lady. The pipe situation really did it, and she's effing lucky she didn't cause more damage than just the carpets. I'm also surprised the cops didn't fine her for false reports when she impersonated the landlord. Evil Karen got what she deserved, and I'm not surprised she got evicted. She was a bee. The next story is, I got my neighbor towed. We live in a split level house with a neighbor above us. We get the driveway according to Elise, and the upper level has always had a space to park out front of the house on the street. We've lived here for years with multiple tenants in the apartment above us. We kept our guests in our driveway or anywhere else on the street to keep the space open for our housemate. Recently, someone moved in next door. To put it nicely, he's an ex-frat bro. Every weekend, the entire street parking filled up especially in front of our house, which has great access to the main street with proximity to this guy's house. Our landlord went over to talk to them about it. Then it started happening through the week. It was obviously a pain in the A for our upstairs neighbor, but it never bothered me until they started to park their cars within inches of either side of our driveway. A thing about our driveway. It is extremely narrow without being elongated by car widths. Furthermore, it backs basically directly onto a busy main street. Without the cars on either side of the driveway, I can clear the space fine. With them, I'm forced to make a nine-point turn just to back out of my already narrow driveway. This week, we decided to block out the parking in front of our house for a small event this weekend by parking our cars in front of the house instead of in the driveway. Mind you, there's plenty of parking just up the street, just as close to their house. It just does not have the ease of access to the main road, but that is accessible with plenty of parking just next door down the street. We were not blocking parking for anything other than directly in front of our house. We parked our cars a little far apart to conserve maximum space. I made sure there was enough space that if someone tried to park in front of us, they might clear it, but they'd definitely be blocking our entire driveway. We told our housemate she could park in the driveway because we were taking up her normal space. We look out the window this evening to see flashing lights and a tow truck. Someone had parked directly in front of our driveway, blocking the entire thing. Our neighbor came home late from work and called the tow truck without us even knowing. That was exactly what I was hoping for but had not thought anyone was actually dumb enough to do. Honestly, I feel a little bit like a D. This is kind of an am I the a-hole post but I don't care. It felt satisfying when the tow truck used the ease of access to the main road that they could not miss for one weekend to tow their car off as they ran out of their home behind it yelling, wait, wait! Haha, <laughs> brilliant. I love stories of jerks being towed. 
I'd like to know if your neighbor admits defeat or tries to keep acting like a jerk. If the latter, perhaps ask your housemate to help find out what it's like to try his own medicine. Ask your friend if they can park their spare car on your street in front of Mr. Cool House, which has enough room to be wasteful but not enough to park. And then you have keys so you can both move cars around, some, so they can't be declared abandoned because of too much downtime. I'm sure once he gets a big dose of his own treatment, he'll raise the white flag and agree to be a more respectful neighbor in the future. I too have a weird driveway to my apartment, and people often park in front of the driveway, which is the only way in and out of the garages. These days I tow that SH without thinking twice. What idiot doesn't know how not to do that? Better yet, what kind of a-hole knows and does it anyway? Anyway, their car won't be there when they get back. The last story is, shoplifting can cost you a job you haven't even gotten yet. An interesting coincidence happened today when I was stocking shelves at my side job and two girls decided to shoplift a few items, and my supervisor asked them at the door if they were going to pay for those items. They were petty items as this was at a Dollar Tree, where everything is $1.25. They proceeded to call my manager a racist a-hole and a B. All three of them, the two girls and my soft voice manager, were black. They walked out with the items because as many people know, retail employees can be sued for physically stopping you for petty theft, unless you're a properly designated security guard. We've been getting ravaged lately by theft, and our location is getting flack from regional for low margins, as our hands are tied. The coincidence came when me and a coworker who managed it decided to grab a bite together at my other job, where I could get us the employee discount. My coworker noticed after we walked in that the same two girls were sitting down across the lobby. I chuckled and we started eating when one of them was called over by my manager there for an interview to begin. Then the other one interviewed. After they were done and walked out, I motioned my manager over and explained the incident that happened less than two hours prior. My coworker backed me up, and she was very happy to dodge those two bullets. They're no longer under consideration for a position. I've seen many security guards fired from stores for harassing shoplifters inside the store. All they could do was verbally deter. I used to work in a store. A guy came in and when I asked him if he needed help finding anything, he treated me with disdain. I was so annoyed because it was my job, and I didn't want to ask him anything. But then his face was etched into my memory. One time this little bee came in with his family and stuffed a candy bar down his pants. The kid was definitely too old to do that. So I made it a rule to point him out to the loss prevention specialist every time he was in the store. Then one day I saw him waiting for an interview with the manager. I had everyone so prepared that I didn't even need to remind anyone of his reputation. They just inherently know he was a thief, and they can't even remember how they knew. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe and smash the like button.